أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد So when it comes to understanding your aqeedah, your laws, your fiqh, um, your ethics, your morality, what's good, what's bad, what's halal, what's haram, you go back to masadr al-tashri'ah. So the sources of legislation, or in theological terms, we call it ma'rifah. So the sources of knowledge. Sources of knowledge go into two categories. Naql, or al-aql and al-naql. So that which is rational, or the intellect, rational principles, and that which has been transmitted to us. So Quran and Sunnah. We're going to talk more today about the naql side of things. So that's what that which has been transmitted to us um, and gave us the legislation, the ahkam, the aqidah. But we're not going to talk about the Quran. We're going to talk about hadith. And we're going to specifically try to answer the question, how did the hadith get to us? Okay? Now, who here can answer that question, or who here thinks they can answer the question, you know, let's go, Yani, what do you think? How do you think the hadith got to us? You don't know. Must have been dropped by Allah. Must have been there from Allah. From Allah. What do you think? I'm not sure. What do you think? From the people of the Prophet's time and... Yeah. Okay, yeah. That we're getting they better. pass it on and pass it on and pass it on. on the Perfect. That's, that's nice. Okay, that's... He's, he's getting somewhere. Anyone else? Anyone got anything else? Tawa. So, as he said, it's from the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and it passes on. And every time it passes on, it's not 100% what we read because every time they change a bit. Okay. And by the time it gets to us, okay, okay, th th that's what we read. Okay. Jade. Okay. We're getting a bit better now. That's fine. That's a bit more detail. What do you think? I think it's from the Nabi's close friends, the Sahab al Nabi mm -hmm. and his family. And obviously, people that know the Nabi, they write, they write, Incidents or stuff that happened with the Nabi and okay. then it gets passed down through yes. generations. Perfect. Okay, so we're getting better. You see how you just said people they doc this is it. Then they document everything that happens. Okay. And then that, that gets sent down and they get eight. different people change it. They change the story what what, what different people hear then you may you know, when they tell someone else, mm. they change a bit of it. They they make it practice practice they sound excited. Okay. And when he says it, make it more and then more. By the time they write it and send it to us and write in books or articles, yeah, it's different as what's. It's I I, 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 I don't know if I could say it's different for what actually happened back then. Okay. But I, I, I feel like it's different. But by the time he gets here, it's a hundred percent. Okay. That's, we're gonna answer that question. That's a. He's made a really good point, by the way. So, okay. So everyone's made a few good points. We're getting better and better. That's good. Um, so when we get to, for example, when you sit under the mimbar and you hear a khatib or one of the scholars and he says, for example, Qala Amir al Ali bin Abi Talib. How do we, I'm trying to answer the question of how do we know Imam Ali said this? Or Qala al Nabiyu al A'zam sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, one, two, three, for example. How do we know that the Prophet said this? Like, how can we reach a point of certainty or reach a point where it's we are more than or close to certainty to say that the Prophet said this? So it's a valid question, no? Because a lot of the time you hear, you know, this happened. This happened in Karbala. This happened in the Battle of Jamal. This happened in Badr. Rasulullah said this. And it's like, okay. So for me as a youngster, I used to hear all of them. Like, and then... The question came to me, how do I know the Prophet said this? I mean, we're living 1,400 years after him. Sahlullah, it's a valid question. Yeah, yeah. How can I trust this? Because your deen, a big part of your deen is taken from the Sunnah, the Quran and Sunnah. Right? Now, what would you say if I said to you, the Quran came to us the same way the Hadith did? How would you, re how would you feel about that? Then it's not the true word of Allah because if it came down Jade. by people, okay. then obviously 
is written by a human and we obviously believe in Allah and the Quran is a miracle so it therefore can't be a miracle if it's written by a human okay and especially that you didn't live in the time of the prophet yeah. so you don't know if it's yeah. true, true. So, yeah. okay. well you had something to say exactly. yes. anyone else want to add to to it what was the question again um so did you know that the quran came to us the same way the hadith did okay so and how do you feel about it i was just like so the Quran that we have here or somewhere upstairs, um, do you, how do you think that was written? That, it was printed, right? Yeah. But so how, but how did it get to us? So. Um, well, are you saying how if you're saying that that the same way, a hadith is passed, like, a hadith is written by people. Mm. The Quran is written by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's the big difference. Okay. So your your statement is um the Quran was actually written. So there's a there's a bit of a theory. We're not gonna get into the Quran discussion, okay? Yeah. But I will answer the question so you're not left in doubt about the Quran, inshaAllah. So, uh, I don't think the Quran has been changed since of course. the day the day is because like the, the day uh, of course uh, Muhammad al Hadith, I can guarantee you that it has been changed. Okay. But, but what you hear from like um, the shiur and the sahaba, I think they've probably studied about it before they say, they can't just oh, read the hadith and say, oh, sure. that's what the Nebi said. They probably learned about it and studied about it. Yeah, okay. But, um, to what Abbas said about hadith, I don't think every hadith has changed, but I think people take a perception about the hadith, mm. then they use their perception as like a hadith as what the hadith means and they pass it down but that's obviously not every hadith only maybe some not all. okay jay that was a um so we've got a few points now um so when it gets when it, when when i make this statement what does it mean so true the quran came to us in the same more or less methodology as the hadith who here has been to the philippines does it exist? Yeah. Yes. How? Oh, how do you know? The country. The country. It's on YouTube. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen it though. Pictures, YouTube. No, no, but you, the, you haven't been there. Because no, of the no. special. So, no, you're saying that. How do you know? How do you know it exists? There's never been there. There's something special about it. No, no, no. I'm, I'm just, I'm, actually, it was just a random country that yeah, came up with. Because there's, there's, there's videos, there. live videos. Okay. okay. Now we're gonna say before the internet. So the, before the internet. I was I'm a nineties child. Know, I'm, know, a 90s child. I'm a nineties child. I'm a nineties child. So when I was like eight or something, there was internet but not a lot of people had it, right? There's not a lot of, sort of computers and so on. Um how do we how did okay, someone in the in the nineteenth century, how did they know the Philippines existed? If the Philippines did actually exist in the nineteenth century. But you know what I mean with the question? How do we know? Or how does someone in Iraq know America existed in the 19th century? He's never been there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, through the people. Exactly. Through the people. Yeah, yeah. It's so like, it's, it's become common knowledge. So it's yeah. it's yeah. something yaqeen. Yeah. So the, to answer the question of the Quran, which we don't want to get into too much. The Quran was memorized by so many people so there's tabaqat there's different levels so you got the companions then you have those that came after the companions then you have those that came after the those that came after the companions so tabi al tabi'in it was it became common knowledge okay that they memorized the quran from back to front and they passed it on to each person and each sheikh will teach it to that person and that student will read it back to the sheikh to make sure that that student is reciting it in the correct way. I understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So when you had someone in the 19th century, an Iraqi, a fallah, had drunk in chai Abu Ali, yeah, and he goes, America exists. He's not wrong. Why? It's become common knowledge. So in a simple, brief way, the Quran became common knowledge. This is the Quran, this is the word of Allah. Yes, we have some certain theories that says that the Prophet in his time, he made sure that the Quran was written. There's a little discussion that um, it was memorized, but then written. 
like um, not too long after the Prophet. Either way, it makes it common knowledge. So many memorized it that it's impossible that the Quran that got to us is incorrect. There's another thing as well. We got different, um, they found books, old, old, from, written on old types of paper. Some like, or some say even like leather, you could say. Where if you, if you actually check, the scientists will check, it shows us that it goes back to the time of the Sahaba. Okay? So it's common knowledge. Quran became common knowledge. It got to us through a high, now this is the word I want you to concentrate on, tawatur. Does anyone know what tawatur is? No. Multiple successive chains. So it got to us through so many different chains. So many people narrated it. So I'm going to, this is not an exact example. It's just that, Allah um, Hafizkum, shukran. This is just a, um, a brief, it's just like a example to give. There was like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and thousands that narrated the Quran to the next generation that it became impossible for anyone to change it because the shuyukh would not only just read it but get their students to read it back to them. I understand what I'm saying to you. And it was written. Then the next person will write it. And the next person that write it before he, um, he, he's doing it under the guidance of his sheikh. And so there's obviously more details to it. I'm just trying to keep it simple and brief. So the Quran got to us through tawatur. What does tawatur mean? That means on each level, on each tabaqa, there were so many narrators that you could, it's impossible for them to, to be upon, uh, to basically base it upon a lie. I understand what I'm saying, which gives us certainty. Is everyone okay with, is everyone understanding what I'm trying to say to you? So you have the Sahaba. They narrate that the Prophet said, Alhamdulillah, for argument's sake. Okay? Then you have a hundred Sahabi saying that. They narrate it to a hundred. So each person to a person. Now you got another hundred on the second tabaqa. The third tabaqa. He said, Alhamdulillah. And so on, and so on, and so on. It's impossible that it, it was based upon a lie. Are you understood my point? So now we're going to go, go back to the yeah, hadith. Well, most of it is a twat, right? Multiple uh, uh, successive reports. So it got to us through so many different reports that it's impossible that it was based upon a lie. Oh, there, is a, there is a discussion about this, but we're not here to get into the details of what the ulama say and, and so on. But generally speaking, that is the understanding. Are you talking about the Quran? Or the I'm talking about the Quran, but I'm just talking about because the Quran... Got to us through the same type of methodology that the hadith did, which is tawatur. Okay, but obviously we're going to get to tawatur and hadith, and and the understanding. Do you think this is uh, this method is still carried on till today? Yes, of course, it happens a lot even now. Okay. Where, where in a different manner, though, it, it happens a bit in a different manner. Different countries, or yeah, even back home, like in Hawzat al Almiya, there is that discussion that goes on. In, 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 in certain areas. You had a question? Huh? No. Because no, no. oh, your hands was up. Okay. So we said that the same method. We've understood now that it's impossible that the Quran has been changed. That it was narrated through so many different chains. Narrated by so many companions and so many people after them. And the ones that came after them. And the ones that came after them. And the ones that wrote the, uh, the Quran. And the ones that narrated the... Quran through speech and so on it's impossible that it, it has been changed now coming to the hadith the hadith falls into two categories category one which we discussed tawatur hadith mutawatir we say right that means it's come through so many different chains on each level it's impossible it's based upon a lie okay the second one father what if like, there's like one person that lies, one person? Okay, well, the other 99 people are saying the same thing, so it's impossible that he's lying in that way. Uh, that, uh, it's just have to, yeah, have to. Um, the fact that he lies is impossible for someone to lie. Have if one? He, if, 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 if he's, as he said, if one person lies, it's basically a 99% yeah, that chance of people listening to the people that lie. The people, the people, 
many other people are seeing the same thing, one person is seeing the opposite, basically. Yeah. yeah. Most people will listen to the, uh, to the m- more... Uh, like, there's like, like, more, more sides, basically. Like one, more side one person. Than so, what we say is, is, if you had... If you had a person, if you had 99 people come to you now and they're saying to you, um, the car <clears throat> in front of um, this place here is burning. The one person comes, no, it's not. We, who are you going to believe? Mm-hmm. Why? Because it gives you certainty. Mm-hmm. It's impossible that 99 people gathered in different areas, in different parts of um, this area for them to say, oh no, you know what, let's gather and tell them that it's burning. That's the same thing here. So sometimes um, common knowledge or general knowledge, you can, you can see it happening where? In the more academic sides, but in a more detailed manner. So you have mutawatir hadiths, so the hadith that got to us through tawatir. For example, one of the hadith, who knows a, a famous hadith that you think got to us in a famous manner? Wa alaykum as Which hadith do you guys think is a hadith that is famous that's come to us through different? Does anyone know? That came to us to you what? Through Tawatur, through so many different chains. <laughs> in your head, in your head. Allah, salla ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. That's good. So, Ghadir, for example, the hadith of Ghadir came to us through so many different chains. It's impossible for someone to come and say that the Prophet never said it. Then we have the second category of hadith, which is what? Khabar al-Wahid or Khabar al-Ahad. Okay? Which is basically a solitary report. That means, again, there is certain different categories within this category. Um, for example, Mustafidha or something along those lines that it might have two, three chains. But these specific narrations, they don't bring us to yaqeen. What does that mean? Like, if you have a trustworthy person, he comes to you and he says, there is a fire happening half a mile away. He's trustworthy. Would you believe him or would you not believe him? I believe him. You would? He's trustworthy. I trust him. Okay, but would you have... As much certainty if 50 people came and no, said. No. Because he's only one. There's only one. Mm-hmm. Could he have, for example, just saw smoke coming out of a... Someone's doing a bit of chilo yeah. kebab. <laughs> something like that. Yeah? And then he thought, oh, there's fire. Could that be a possibility? Yeah, yeah. That he misunderstood. But if you have another 49 people saying the same thing, what happens? You're certain. 100%. You're certain because... No, yeah, you, you're gonna have people that might have seen they're, they're certain Khala, you got 50 people saying the same thing it's basically your evidence basically exactly it's, it's proven here that all, all you need is three people okay that it's, it's proven that it's scientifically mm. all you need is three people for someone to believe you one is two less two is like okay but three you're 100 percent certain um, I wouldn't say three is 100% certain, but I think it gives you more certainty than yeah, one person. One yeah, of course. But, uh, like, 100%. I've, like, I've learned about it. So basically, three is like, we'll get the person thinking. Like, let's say, oh, someone says help. Okay, help, help. Now, help, help. Three times if you say that, yeah, you're definitely going to get the person thinking. 100%. So the more people, the better it is. Mm-hmm. But like I said, the hadith falls into two categories. Tawatur or Ahadith al Mutawatira uh, and Khabar al Ahad. Okay, Khabar al Ahad, this is a solitary report. It could mean three, it could mean two. There's a d- discussion on it between the scholars. Or it could mean just one chain. Now, how do the scholars um, work with such a hadith? Again, we're not going to get into that because that's a bit more complicated. Okay, so that's how a hadith got to us in these two categories. Okay. Then there is the discussion of, then there is the discussion of, um, how did these ahadith actually get to us? So both the ahadith al-mutawatir and the solitary reports. Okay. So there's a discussion. Wa alaykum assalam wa rahmah wa likram. Basida mungkin insid al-bab ya ma'akumana. 
So now how did the Ahadith al-Mutawatira and the solitary reports get to us? Good, good discussion, right? Yeah. Okay. So we know that in the time of the Prophet, you had certain Sahaba that were actually writing down Ahadith of the Prophet. We also know, which is more important for us as Shia, that Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali bin Abi Talib alayhi salam was writing down a hadith to us of Rasulullah and so on. This is very crucial. Why? Because when we go back to the Shia hadith books, okay, now I want to ask everyone, how many people here know the four main books of the Shia? The four main books of the Shia. Give us one. Give us one. Rahman is looking at everyone. He's, he's going to be upset if no one knows. No one knows? Is it the pillars? No. You're not allowed to search it. Is it Ilm? No, it's not. Oh, okay. Ilm Is it the pillars? Is that one called Ilm Musa? Who has more uh, books? It's in the Shia. Um, we are four. No, no, so when we say four main books, that means just four main yeah, books, but we have many yeah, other we have ones. Main, yeah, no. um, I think it's a difficult question to say, but it could be said that it's the Sunnis, yani. it could be said, but it's a difficult question though, as they are a bigger sect in yeah, like, terms of the people that follow that sect or the school of four. Yeah, but we don't want to get into that. I want to know the four who knows the four main books of the Shia. Anyone know? Okay, four main books of the Shia. Have one of them which is the most important, Al Kafi. Yeah, so th this is only two volumes of it, it's not one volume, okay? No, 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 it's just the way that it's written. Usul Al Kafi, okay? Which has been written by Muhammad bin Ya'qub Al Kulaini. Then there is the other book, Man La Yahdaruh Al Faqih, which has been written by Sheikh Al Saduq Ibn Babawai. Then you have Al Istibsar and Tahdib Al Ahkam. That has been written by Sheikh Al-Tusi. Okay, you, um, maybe you don't know these names. Mm -hmm. But inshallah, what we want to do is, is get to know these names. Because it's very crucial that we know our own books. What's the point of us saying we're Shia? Do I don't know my own books. I don't read. I don't know what the Imam is saying. I don't know how the Hadith is getting to us. What's the point? Mm -hmm. Is Shia just inheritance? Are we just inheriting our deen? No, we have to know our books, we have to read them, we have to ask questions about them, we have to see what the Imams say. Now, um, how did someone like, we're going to talk about Al-Kafi more because that is the primary source. Al-Kafi, Muhammad bin Ya'qub Al-Kulaini, the author of Al-Kafi, that's his name, Muhammad bin Ya'qub Al-Kulaini. How was he? Is he living now? No, no, no. He was uh, living in the 4th century, okay? He sounds like he's part of it. That yeah, he's from the one of our greatest, greatest muhaddithin, those that narrated the hadith. So he was from the fourth century. So when he's narrating from most of our narrations, and our books come from Imam al Sadiq, who's the sixth Imam, which I hope everyone knows here. Everyone knows here. Yeah. I need everyone to, sh to tell me, yeah. 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 He wasn't sure. Now we have everyone needs to know sixth Imam, Imam al Sadiq. The fifth one is Imam al Baqir. So many of our narrations came from Imam al Baqir and Imam al Sadiq. This is because of the political um, re, um, events that were occurring at that time. They were able to narrate a bit more than the other Imams. Muhammad bin Ya'qub al Kulaini lived in the fourth century. Imam al Sadiq lived in what? The second century. So there's about Two over, nearly over 200, no, just under 200 years between them. Okay? So, how is it that he's narrating from the Imam? The word probably got that, like, uh, as he said, there's, there's again. Tawatur, Tawatur yeah. or That's solitary it. reports. No, but we don't want, we're, we, we, we are kind of past that discussion now. This is just, it was just a brief explanation for you to understand how a hadith are put into categories and so on. So the way that it got to us, for example, Muhammad bin Ya'qub al-Kulaini, here in the book, you'll see this chain quite a lot. Okay? An, 
محمد بن يعقوب الكليني عن علي بن إبراهيم بن هاشم عن أبي إبراهيم بن هاشم عن محمد بن أبي عمير عن هشام بن سالم عن إمام الصادق عن means he's narrated from so even the عن the عن عنا there's a discussion on it on how it's when it's used and how it's used but we don't want to get in we're, we're, we're in the beginning stages we're, we're together we're learning inshallah yeah we, we don't want to get into the and, and, and so on <laughs> yeah. that gets a bit complicated okay so most of our ahadith in our books in the shia books have come to us through books what does that mean imam sadiq is here he has a companion called hisham bin al-hakam Okay, Hisham bin al-Hakam has a book. Imam al-Sadiq says, for example, Allah cannot be seen. For example, I'm Hisham bin al-Hakam. I write it down. Imam al-Sadiq said, Allah cannot be seen. His student, Muhammad bin Abi Umair, comes. Muhammad bin Abi Umair is the student of who? No, Hisham bin al al Hakam. Okay, Muhammad bin Abi Umair is the student of Muhammad of Hisham bin al Hakam. Okay, now don't worry. By the way, like there's so many names. You're like, oh, I, I, I was exactly like that. It's okay. It's, it's totally normal. By the way, totally normal. I, I, even now, I, I sometimes get confused. Believe me. Um, so Muhammad bin Abi Umair. Is the student of Hisham bin al-Hakam who narrated from Imam al-Sadr. He's written it down. It's in the book now. Okay. I'm showing you one of the ways. We're going to get into the different ways that the ahadith got to us in a second. He writes it down. Muhammad bin Abi Umair is being taught by Hisham bin al-Hakam. He writes it down. An Hisham bin al-Hakam. From Hisham bin al-Hakam. He said. Imam al-Sadr said. Allah cannot be seen. Jayid. Okay. So He's written the hadith in, in his book now. Muhammad bin Abi Umair. Wa alaykum as wa rahmah. Muhammad bin Abi Umair. Has it in his book now. He's mentioned who he's got it from. And who Hisham bin Hakim is narrating from. Which is Imam al-Sadiq. Ibrahim bin Hashim. Narrates from who? Muhammad bin Abi Umair. See, he's, he's getting it now. Shreya, Shreya. Focus with me, you'll know the name. Shreya, Shreya, inshallah. And by the way, these are the names of the ones that gave you the religion of Ali Muhammad. They are our Salaf as Salih. I always say, don't be scared of the word Salafi. Salafi just means righteous predecessor. Salaf as Salih means righteous predecessor. So those that preceded, that came before us, that were upon righteousness. That were, that were upon goodness. They were good people. Okay? So they feared Allah. So everyone who you like said the An to you, they were good people. We're going to get to that. Okay. That's another discussion. That's a very good question, by the way. Tabar. You see how you're talking, like you're, you're saying. Bismillah. Uh, no, no, Tabar, Tabar. You know how, like, you see, uh, no, that person no, no. wrote uh, from that person. And then, yeah. I don't know if this is similar or not. Yeah. But get like you see our history that we get taught right now. Mm. Get, uh, apparently, whatever they talk to someone, they just I love boo, they write it down, and then they keep it safe somewhere. Mm. So different generations, when they come, when they read it, they know not to touch it. First of all, it's written in paper and it diff as a special type of lead or something. Yeah, is, is that what this is about? Mm. If you know what I mean. Totally. Okay, yeah. So that's a good question. Um, so what you, so your question is basically, is it a question or are you just making a point? No, as a, a question. Okay. So what you're saying is, is um, how do we know it hasn't been changed? Mm -hmm. Okay, we're, we're going to get to that. that that's slowly. Because what okay? someone's in the writing, he messes up in the writing. That's fine. We're going to get to that. Is it wrong? That's a very good point. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. <clears throat> slowly, slowly. So you lot asking questions, you're very fast to get the answers, but we're going to get there, inshallah. So Muhammad bin Abi Umair narrates this. His student, his Ibrahim bin Hashim, mm -hmm. narrates from him. Okay. 
An. So he writes now, Ibrahim bin Hashim now is writing. Yeah. An Muhammad bin Abi Umayr. An Hisham bin Al Hakam. An Imam al Sadiq. Yeah. So now it's, we're passing down books. This is amazing. It's better than um, me sitting here. Qala Rasulullah. Then he passes on to the next book. So it's, by, uh, by, it's called oral transmission. Okay? It's better, right? Because you're writing. Yeah, you got evidence, right? Yeah, like, and by the way, the one that's narrating, they have to write the names. Don't they? Yeah. they have to write the names who they're narrating from, yeah. which shows us the dikka of these people. But they also sometimes will tell you the facial expression or the body language of the imam or the prophet. Okay. Like yeah, they mention sometimes in the hadith, I, like I oh his hair, the, the like it, it's like he he got shocked when the imam heard it, something along them lines. Um, so we're going to continue. I know everyone uh, has got a question, but let's just try to keep it um, more within what is being discussed at the moment. Okay. Ibrahim bin Hashim now has said, An Ibn Abi Umair, Muhammad bin Abi Umair, or some, in some um, Asanid, is Ibn Abi Umair. Okay. An Hisham bin Al-Haqa, An Imam al-Sadiq, alayhi salam. His son, the son of who? Ibrahim bin Hashim. Allah salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So the son of Ibrahim bin Hashim, who is Ali bin Ibrahim bin Hashim, his son, narrates from his father. So he gets a book now. He says, An Abi, An Ibn Abi Umayr, An Hisham bin al Hakam, An. Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam. Jayid. So now the book is getting to us through his son. But it's getting to us one by one, book by book. Amazing. So, so that's like impossible. You can't change it. You, okay, but what if just in the writing, someone could read it like wrong? Like someone just we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. that listen, these listen, are good questions. Listen, listen. Write down the question and we're going to get to that. Because so I, I don't want to... Okay. Why don't we just take the book off uh, Hisham and Hakim instead of... Oh, okay, that, that's a good question. Um, I'll answer that quickly. So we do have some books of the Ashab that reached us. Some didn't reach us, but it reached who? Muhammad bin Yaqub al Kulain. He's the one that passed on to us. That's why I said who in the beginning. Muhammad bin Yaqub al Kulain. An Ali bin Ibrahim bin Hashim. An Abi An Ibn Abi Umair. An Hisham bin al Hakam an Imam al Sadiq alayhi salam. So sometimes the books, the actual books of Ibn Abi Umayr didn't reach us, but it reached him. And he was able to reach it to his students, and his students were able to reach it to the other, his, their students, and their students were able to reach it. And this is what's called Ijazat, that they give them Ijazat to be able to narrate. They're giving them permission to be able to narrate. Are you understanding now how now it's like, oh, okay, this is, this is, this is like, it's, this is very precise. And now there's another science. Another science, another, um, you want to call it, subject to a certain degree, okay? Where it basically says, Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmah. Wa alaykum as salam wa rahmah. Where it basically says, where it basically says, it's a science that is focused on specifically the study of the narrators of hadith, which is called al murrijal so it's the study of those that narrate the hadith. So if we have Hisham bin al-Hakam, Ibn Abi Umayr, Ibrahim bin Hashim, Ali bin Ibrahim bin Hashim, and each one of you is narrating a book, how do we know you're all trustworthy? There's a whole science that comes, that focuses. But again, we're not going to get into that because we don't want to sidetrack because it's a, um, it will be another discussion. But the discussion will become who is thiqa, who's trustworthy. Mm -hmm. I know Hisham bin Hakam is thiqa. I know Ibn Abi Umayr is thiqa now because the experts that lived closer to that time and those that lived in their time are mentioning to me and are mentioning through the books that this person is thiqa. Or sometimes it's, it's been mentioned that it's so famous, it's so famous that, for example, Hisham bin Hakam was a Shi'i imami. Um, and the Shia believed that he was thiqa, for example. This is just the example. 
Okay? So, these are the ways that we determine if someone is thick or not. So, for example, when I open up Al-Kafi, here's is Al-Kafi, our primary source, okay? Muhammad bin Ya'qub, the compiler of the book, he received the book of who? Ali bin Ibrahim bin Hajim. Have you understood the point? Yeah. So now it got from Hisham bin al-Hakam who narrated from Imam al-Sadiq who gave it to his student and his student, his student and the book who they kept on, uh, it was like a transcript. He gets it from him, he writes it here from that book and he gets it to that book and he passes on, it got to who? Muhammad bin Yaqub al kulaini And then this reached his students and his student reached and until it got to us. Yeah. So it gives us what? Certainty. Because it's written by trustworthy people. Trustworthy people and it reached us. Now, of course, not everyone in Al-Kafi is considered thiqa. And that's why we have the, the, um, the science of Ilm al-Rajal. Where it tells us which one is thiqa and which one isn't, for example. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Okay, so the different, um, the different um, ways that the ahadith are passed on. This is crucial. I spoke about what I just mentioned now is the way that majority, majority, I've heard some scholars say about 80% of our Torah, of our heritage, so the words of Ahlul Bayt, the actions of Ahlul Bayt, the seer of Ahlul Bayt, you can say that. So the ahadith that, that have come to us from Ahlul Bayt has come to us through what? Books. Which is what? Far more credible and trustworthy than someone passing it on to the next person, next person, next person, mm -hmm. just through oral transmission. So, for example, I say it to you, then you say it to him, then you say it to him. I'm not saying you can't reach a point of certainty with that. You can. But when it comes to that it's written transmission, it's far more detailed. So, we have the first one. Sama. So, it's hearing the traditions from the sheikh. There's a, there's a, in English Arabic, there's a book. What, the, books. my book here, this one. So this one's Arabic, this one's English. Um, and inshallah, I'm going to um, tell you more about this book later on. Inshallah, if you want, you should go and buy it to, to learn more about the hadith. I'll show it to you in a second. Yeah. So, I, so, the, so the book's more like, so I'm just like recapping what you said, because mm. to make sure. So what you're trying to say, you like, the book is more thing, more, more. evidence, and the mouth is like, the oral thing is is it's still it's trustworthy like, yeah but you might forget what like you uh, might yeah so there's a discussion the so the experts the experts will tell you for example you have a hadith in sahih muslim sahih muslim is a sunni book of hadith okay that says zayd bin arqam zayd bin arqam is one of the sahab of rasulullah okay who narrates the hadith hadith of taqalain who knows hadith of taqalain the hadith of the prophet where he says I am leaving with you the two weighty things, the Quran and my Ahlul Bayt. Now, the one in, Bukha, uh, in Sahih Muslim, of course, um, before someone quotes him on it, it's slightly different. But what we say is, is Zayd bin Arqam, Zayd bin Arqam, the companion of Rasulullah, he mentions in the beginning of the hadith, for example, he says, I've become an old man, I might be forgetful. Now, this goes to the other point, which is certain scholars, the experts of Ilm al Rajal, the study, the ones that study the narrators of hadith, what they do is, is they will say, oh, this person at the end of his life started to forget. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? Yeah. So this gives us an understanding and, and sometimes we're able to tell if he is narrating this specific hadith from a person at the end of his life. Because if he did, we'll start to be a bit wary. We'd, ha we'd have to have qara'in. So what does qara'in mean? Other evidences to prove this hadith. But if we would know that this person only met this narrator of hadith early on in their life, what happens? What happens? We know that he's thiqa and he wasn't forgetful then. Are you, have you understood my point? So one of the, is yeah, it a main Sydney book that you're talking about? The, I, I'll just use that as an example because oh, so it came on top of, of my it, head. So the writer of it, he was forgetful when he wrote the book? No, 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 no. no. Oh. The, the narrator that's narrating from Rasulullah. Yeah. The, the, the book was written by a guy that came... Um, you can say about nearly just over a hundred to two hundred years after them. Okay, something along uh, them lines. So he's just he's narrated. He has a chain just like Muhammad bin Yaqub 
going back to Zayd bin Arqam, who's the companion of Rasulullah. Have you understood yeah. my point? Yeah. And he says, the companion of Rasulullah, Zayd bin Arqam, that I've become a bit forgetful. But we know early on in his life, he wasn't forgetful. So whatever he's narrating early on, which sometimes we would know, because of the experts of, uh, of hadith and so on, we would know that. Fadal. Uh, on this question, is, it, is, it about, is it about the, the verse here? Yeah. Is it okay or, or not okay if you like believe in the Sunnah? But I'm not saying about like, the Sunnah books, or, but the Hadith, the, early, the, the Sunnah books, if you know what I mean. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's a, a Shi'i book, yeah? Yeah, so this is going through. This is. Um, is that a Shia or Sunni book? So this is a Shia book, yeah. Shia book of Hadith. Uh -huh. This is more discussing in a general sense okay, that book, Hadith. Yeah. That's a Shia, yeah. That's a Shia book. What if you get the same one, but a Sunni? Can you still believe that one? Yeah. Okay, so there's. Bukhari, Bukhari. Yeah, like Bukhari. You, have you heard of Bukhari before? Okay, Bukhari is, is the main book of the Sunnis that when it comes to Hadith. So this is how it works. Why do we, um, so this is, this is a lengthy, a good question, but a lengthy one, but I'll try to answer as short as I can in a short manner. Bukhari, for example, which is the main Sunni book of Hadith, um, we, we trust, we trust some of the Hadith in there. If it goes hand in hand with what is found in our books. Why? Because we no, those that are narrating from the Imams or the hadith that we are accepting that I have been narrated from the Imams have come to us through trustworthy individuals based upon our standard. Have you understood the point? So that's the only thing. So no, you can't just, even with Al-Kafi, you can't just pick up and just be like, oh, you know what? I read this hadith, khalas, I'm going to act upon it. It doesn't work like that. So, but, so if, if it doesn't match up, a Sunni and a Hadith that you can probably or it will make sense if you read it in a Shia book. If it doesn't match up, what is in a Sunni book? Can we believe in it or not? Um, depending, for example, if it's come to us in a Sunni book through Tawatur, um, it becomes Hujja, it becomes an authority. So, for example, um, there are certain narrations in Sunni books that has been narrated by so many people that you can't say it's a lie. What about it's not, what if it's not Tawatur? It's not Tawatur. Then it's not hujja upon us. It doesn't become an authority upon us. Like we're we're not obliged to follow it. But that that, that is a very detailed. There's a very detailed answer. Maybe I can do. Um, I can answer that question in a more detailed manner in a different, separate time, inshallah. Because it's a. By the way, it's a very very good question. It's a question that many Shias need to um, understand. No, it's because I, I have a friend. Here. He's a he's a uh, he's a Sunni. Yeah. And we'll go, sometimes when I. Um, Muhammad, when we talk to him about the like the books, mm. he brings up his hadith. Yeah, yeah. And I like, don't know if I should like, believe it or not. He says like, "Oh, your hadith is wrong because it's not trustworthy." I'm like, "Okay, so okay. It, it, it don't matter if you." It's not yeah, I mean, like, look, obviously, he's gonna say that. That's that's his opinion. Like, you know, you could just turn around and just say, "Okay, well, your books are not yeah. uh, trustworthy either," and you can work two ways. It doesn't work like that. There's a whole discussion on what makes their books not trustworthy and what makes their books trustworthy. Um, um, yeah, like I said, it's a lengthy discussion, but inshallah, do you feel happy with the answer that I gave you? So whatever yeah. goes hand in hand with our books, or it's yeah. mutawatir, yeah. we would generally accept. Of course, we might understand the hadith different to them, mm -hmm. but again, like I said, that that requires a, me, me a depth answer. I mean, personally, I'm only going to believe books from the Shia. No, the, the, the tawatir, I'm out of it. Just to be no, no, because it's a Shia. I mean, look, even if there's tawatir in a Sunni book. It shouldn't make you, um, it should make you, you should be open to examining, uh, uh, examining the book, um, reading, reading the hadith, looking at the different chains. Of course, that's inshallah when you um, get more, pick up more knowledge about, you know, these things. But la, you shouldn't do that. Of course, your trust should be in the books of the Shia, which again requires um, some scholars, um, you need obviously to, Take the understanding from the ulama because you know sometimes one word can mean so many different things and they are the ones that are experts in the arabic language and and the different chains and so on anyway so sama so that was one of the ways that it's uh, the hadith get, got to us which is 
you hear one of the had the sheikhs of hadith and then the other person hears it and so on okay the second one the second one is um qira'a so he would read back the tradition to the sheikh so let's say for argument's sake uh wa that i'm a uh, a sheikh of hadith i'm a muhaddith okay someone like zurara he is a sheikh of hadith zurara is one of the most trustworthy companions of imam al-baqir and al-sadiq alayhi wasalam okay so you have a sheikh of hadith you're my student he will read back the hadith to me and then he would mention for example in the chain i read to sheikh x and so on and that's one of the ways that the hadith got to us okay have you understood how i've tried to break it down we went from mutawatir solitary report okay then we went to how do the hadith of the shia most of the hadith of shia get to us and then now we're trying to break down to um, a bit more detail okay so qira'a sama and qira'a so so you have someone that narrates orally so i would say for example um i would say let's say for example this book cover is green i say it to him he passes it. that's oral transmission okay he he hears it from the person ijaza permission to transmit on someone's authority so i'm a scholar of hadith i give you permission to narrate on my authority and that's why you, you see sometimes in the books of hadith on the authority of Ibn Abi Umar, for example, or on the authority of this, this, this. Okay? So this is ijaza. So someone has been given the permission to narrate. Is everyone understanding with me? Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Ijaza, okay? Fadal. Ijaza. I don't know this, but is it not a permission basically? Yeah, he's given him permission to transmit on his authority. And if you don't have it, you can't read it. So there's a discussion on that. Okay, we, again, like I said, we don't want to get into the complicated yeah. stuff, but we, I'm just trying to give you a, a visual on how it, it happens. Munawalat. Munawalat is, for example, handing over a book of traditions. I have this book of hadith. I pass it on to Abdul Rahman. Abdul Rahman, okay? Now, but I give it to Abdul Rahman, Abdul Rahman gives it to him. And this is called Munawala. Okay? Munawala. So basically, what it means is he's passing on the book. He's not narrating from the book. <clears throat> Have you understood the point? Yeah. So he's passing on the book. So sometimes you see a muhaddith who would mention that. Um, the book was given to him. It was passed on to him. I understand my point. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to get you to visualize how things are working. Okay. Um, kitaba, writing down. So what does that mean? That means he, he's, he's, he's not just passing on the book. He's passing on the book, giving him authority. And he's writing it down and he's passing on his book to the other person. Have you understood my point? Yeah. And it, again, within that, there are different discussions, the different types of kitabah, without permission, with permission, but we're not going to get into that. Then we have, for example, I'm not going to discuss the other ones because I think it's a bit more um, detailed and, and it's unneeded. But wujada, for example. Wujada, for example, finding a narration. For example, you're in Baghdad, you go into the house of Muhammad bin Abi Umayr. We all mentioned he's the student of who? Hisham bin al-Hakam. You go in there, he's in Baghdad. His, he's, I don't know, he's died. You find his book. There's a discussion on that. We don't want to get into too much detail on each one. But this is the way that hadith got to us. Okay? It's through ijaza, sama', qara'a, kitaba, munawala, munawala, and so on. So these are the different ways that the hadith got to us. So now, when a khatib or when a alim says on the pulpit that Imam Ali alayhi salam said this, or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said this, we know that in most cases, in most cases, 
insha'Allah, in most cases. That, this narration, has been mentioned in a book. That book, the author of that book compiled this hadith because he got it from the book of his share. And the book of his share got it from his share. And his share, going back to the Imam. Is that understood? Yeah. So now we've understood all of these things, insha'Allah. And now I think, has everyone got an idea now of how hadith gets to us? Yeah. Do you feel a bit more, um, what's the word? Be honest with me, it's okay. Yeah. Do you feel a bit more, you have a bit more certainty yeah. when it comes to hadith? Because yeah. I remember in the beginning you was like, yeah, but I'm not sure. Yeah. Do you feel a bit more certainty? Yeah. And the hard work that's put in to yeah. understand how the hadith gets to us, yeah? yeah?